tonight on the South Today. Four fresh faces are joining Dunedin's new mayor-elect. The council is eager to get underway. A new emissions plan has been announced by government today, with some farmers worried about the policy. And an unusual item has been auctioned off and is destined north for a Christchurch museum. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Four brand new councillors are joining Dunedin's Mayor-elect Jules Raddick for an inauguration ceremony later this month. The group met informally for the first time since the election was called and the mood was upbeat and optimistic. You got me through. <laughs> From campaign rivals to new colleagues, four fresh faces for the Dunedin City Council meeting for the first time since results were announced. A mix of independent candidates and those on the Team Dunedin ticket, all looking forward to working together with the new mayor-elect Jules Raddick and returning member Sophie Barker. For independent councillor Cherry Lucas, the win is a culmination of a lot of hard work in the community. I didn't have, you know, like um, a party or, you know, a grouping behind me um, and I haven't stood for council before, I haven't been on the community board before, so to, to get in on my first time I'm really delighted. For Brent Weatherall, who ran on the Team Dunedin ticket, victory is very much a case of team effort, team reward. We were part of a team, um, I would have liked to have seen a few more of our team on board, but uh, at the end of the day uh, there's been a vote for change. The new councillors agreeing there's a lot of challenges and hard work to come over the next three years. I think life shrinks and expands in proportion to one's courage, so here we go. The group will be getting together again later this month for the inaugural council meeting. In Dunedin, the South Today. And the four new faces will join nine re-elected members and Bill Acklin returns to the council after nine years. Well, a small group of protesters gathered at one of Dunedin's level crossings yesterday morning to rally in support of passenger rail. This group of environmental activists and rail supporters hailed morning traffic from the footpath near Dunedin's railway station. The group held placards alongside colourful flags bearing the symbol of the climate change direct action group Extinction Rebellion. Local artist Bruce Mahalski was one of the protesters at the event. He says it makes more sense to transport people and goods using trains rather than planes or buses. Farmers say a world first scheme that'll see them pay for emissions by 2025 will rip the guts out of small town New Zealand. The government announced this morning what it's calling a consultation document which could see the agricultural industry pay for farm related emissions. A controversial policy to make New Zealand reduce its carbon emissions. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, flanked by Green Party co-leader James Shaw and Agriculture Minister Damien O'Connor, as they announced the launch of Te Tātai Utu o Nga Tukuna Ahu Whenua. Here we have a proposal to make our farmers not only the best in the world, but the best for the world. That has the potential to unlock an emerging and significant price premium for climate-friendly agricultural products and boost our export brand. If adopted, the consultation document will see the government control the amount of levies farmers pay, rather than have them set by the rural sector. The system of farm gate pricing has been worked on since 2019, after calls from the sector to have an emissions pricing system which rewards climate-friendly farmers. Federated Farmers National President Andrew Hoggard has strongly opposed the plan. He says it rips the guts out of small-town New Zealand. He says it will see sheep and beef farms converted into trees. The government is looking to reduce methane emissions by New Zealand with a net zero emissions target set for 2050. In Dunedin, the South Today. The Wanaka Helicopter Company, responsible for a fatal 2018 crash which claimed three lives, has been ordered to pay a heavy fine. Alpine Group operated the downed helicopter and has been fined more than $350,000 at today's hearing. The company failed to properly report safety incidents leading up to the crash, which resulted in the death of the pilot and two passengers. The final aviation safety report into the incident has not yet been released. The Otago Regional Council welcomes a fresh face as their youngest member to uh, seek to join them for this term. 
21-year-old Elliot Weir was voted into council over the weekend and says younger voters turned out for their campaign. Weir identifies as they, them and says they're part of the most progressive Otago Regional Council ever. Best, I just want to do what's best for every person in the region and um, what's best for our land and our water and, 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 and people. They are setting their sights on the management of land and water sustainability along with a more reliable bus service. In Dunedin, the South Today. An unexpected overstayer with a loyal following of school kids is finally heading north. An antique polar bear is part of an auction lot of unusual items destined for a forever home now. The auctioneer says the rare item will be missed by many. The stuffed polar bear is making its way north to a new home to join Canterbury Museum's taxidermy collection. The plush but slightly intimidating animal looked a little out of place when it arrived at Proctor's auctioneers. So this polar bear has been with us for over a year. Uh, we've tried selling him a couple of times with um, no success. The shop's owners say after failing to sell, the bear became an unexpected attraction for local school kids, some of them taking a keen interest in its movements. We actually have a few regulars that come in each week to make sure he's still here, but I told them to say their goodbyes last week. Canterbury Museum eventually buying the taxidermy treasure for its own collection. The polar bear has been loaded into the moving truck and is on its way up north. In Dunedin, the South Today. If I can I still to come on the South Today. Christchurch Highland dancers are fundraising their way to the States for the trip of a lifetime. And we meet a Dunedin surfer who got a bit too up close and personal with a sea lion at the weekend. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Better get down to John's Furniture Warehouse this weekend. It's a price rampage. And you can pay it off over 18 months interest free. Price rampage. And my mate John. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need. From answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. 17 Canterbury-based dancers are hoping to head to a prestigious Highland dancing competition in America early next year. Three Christchurch-based dancers are joining forces to fundraise for their trip of a lifetime, further cementing their lifelong friendship. Putting their best feet forward, Addison Jones, Estelle Buchanan and Ciara Clark 
are among more than 30 Highland dancers who've been chosen to represent New Zealand. The dancers are headed to the Virginia International Tattoo Festival in America next April. Their goal is to fundraise up to $10,000 each for the chance to dance for their city and country on the world stage. Like the most like I've ever danced in front of was maybe like a couple hundred at most. It'll be different being in a massive arena with lots of people, so it's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, especially because it's in a bigger country as well, there's going to be just a big amount of people coming to watch. Yeah, and it's a world event, so that's going to be cool to see all that, the different people speaking the different languages. The trio are students of dance teacher Julie Hawke, often training at Christchurch's Showbiz Canterbury Studio. More than half of the dancers selected to represent Aotearoa are from Canterbury and will dance it off against the world's best. All of the New Zealand representatives face a stiff financial challenge to get halfway around the world, with these three trying different fundraising schemes. The trio are hoping members of the public will Highland fling them some money to help them on their way. They've set up a Give a Little page, and the trio, along with their parents, are hosting a quiz night mid-November. In Christchurch, the South today. A Dunedin surfer was bit by a sea lion recently, but CSC isn't holding a grudge. Craig Latimer filmed the incident as a sea lion came a bit too close to him and his friend while they were out surfing at Dunedin's St Kilda Beach. The sea lion mouthed Latimer a bit hard around the waist, puncturing his wetsuit. The surfers insist it wasn't an attack, but it was just the sea lion having a wee taste test. Latimer was able to swim away and escape with a few scrapes and a bit of a fright. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Mayor Jules Reddick met with his four brand new councillors as they prepare for the triennium. The government has announced a new emissions reduction policy with farmers worried about its impact on business. And an antique polar bear was sold at auction and is heading to the Canterbury Museum's taxidermy collection. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, and we welcome the editor, Barry Stewart. Kia ora, Barry, what can oh, we expect in your paper? Hello, Hannah. Well, um, we're still on election mode, so mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at some of the issues around there and, and whether the mooted revamp of George Street uh, makes it past the campaign trail is uh, but on a knife edge as mm. we talk to various councillors who are mulling their options, so we, uh, we hear what they have to say about the possibility of that. Okay. We also talked to New Invercargill Mayor Nobby Clark, uh, who says it's uh, a new era for uh, starting at the Invercargill City Council, which, which makes some sense after, after Sir Tim's long reign. Uh, and on the food front, uh, on our fresh pages, we uh, look at crepes. Oh. Crepes to the rescue. Okay. <laughs> Annabelle Langbine's got a new uh, book out and she gives us a, a delightful selection of uh, crepe recipes. Oh, I'm intrigued. She tells the story of a dinner party and, and uh, this is where the crepes come to the rescue comes into it. So okay. She whipped up uh, a delightful <laughs> crepe recipe. That sounds lovely. Easy. Thank you for Apparently. sharing, Barry. Okay. <laughs> and now time for a look at the weather. The South Today weather Proudly brought to you by MoleMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. And time now for a look at the weather. Well, the situation, cool easterly airflow dominates weather patterns over the region for the rest of the week, with long fine periods inland, but often cloudy skies about the Otago coast. Heading to the top of the South Island, showers and easterlies up in Nelson tomorrow with a high of 15. Greymouth's looking cloudy and windy with 14, while Christchurch can expect nor'easterlies, a spot of clouds and a high of 11. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago now. Cloudy with nor'easterlies through here tomorrow. Ashburton, Timaru and Awamaru can all expect an 11 degree day. Westwards now to the Central Lakes. Another fine day with very light winds through the valley here. 14 degrees for Wanaka and Queenstown, with 13 down in Alex. 
Heading further south, fine with light winds and 14 degrees tomorrow in Balclutha and Gore, while the Catlins is in for a cloudy day with nor'easterlies and 11 degrees as the high. Now down to the deep south. Fine but quite cold tonight in Invercargill, down to just one degree. And the next two days are shaping up to be fine and sunny with light winds and cool temperatures up to 14 degrees both days, Wednesday and Thursday. And lastly, heading to Dunedin. High cloud and nine degrees overnight. Cloudy tomorrow, uh, both high and low cloud with nor'easterlies and late showers heading for 11. Thursday's looking similar with fresh easterlies and light rain along with a high of just 10 degrees. And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.